family, I am significantly missing your cuddles and your hugs and your fellowship. And I'm so looking forward to when we get back together. But I have a brief moment today to talk to you about one of the passions that God's put in my heart. I'm an Aboriginal woman from the Wiradjuri tribe and my mum's family are from the Wellington area. And here in Australia, we're celebrating, we are actually in the middle of Reconciliation Week, as Theo has said, which runs from the 27th of May to the 3rd of June. So we're also as a nation, experiencing what I believe is a convergence that many of the prophets have spoken about. And that's between the time of Passover and Pentecost. And as we're here in Pentecost Sunday, the other thing that we're experiencing is a tremendous shaking across our nation. So as of the 21st of January, 2020, Reconciliation Australia set the theme for our nation for this year. And that theme is, in this together. And those words have been resounding right across this land. We're all in this together. God is speaking to us as a nation. And I believe that God is, he is the God of the nations. And so he gives us opportunities all of the time to partner with him in what he's doing with us personally and as a nation. So I am very personally grateful for this opportunity to be bringing a level of awareness to us as a church family about a significant part of our national journey. And we're gonna take a few minutes now and we're gonna look at a very simplistic view of the Australian Indigenous journey. So I want you to just, not just open up your eyes and your ears, but open up your hearts to what we're going to see in these next few minutes. The story of our communities, people and nation, starts a long, long time ago. More than 60,000 years, in fact. This was when our culture and our law first started to thrive. We knew who we were and where we belonged. We took care of each other, our land and our waters. We ate food that made us healthy, lived on country and abided by our laws and song lines. Our families, our children were happy with strong minds and hearts because they were where they belonged. But then, everything changed. Colonisation came, bringing wars, disease, famine, violence, and the destruction and violation of our cultural laws, sacred sites, families, and communities. We were denied our knowledge, language, ceremonies, and identity. The very things that tell us who we are and where we belong and our connections with each other and the land grew weak. And then our children were taken from us. They had their names changed and their identities stripped away. They were told that Aboriginal people were bad. Worse still, they were told that their parents and grandparents did not want them. For years this happened and those children became known as the Stolen Generations. Our children were denied love and experienced physical, emotional, and sexual abuse. This left very deep, very complex, and very real wounds, leaving scars that are still being felt personally, socially, spiritually, and collectively. In the time when our story started, we were able to parent in the cultural way that has seen our family survive and thrive for generations. Our people were strong, and our culture flowed and healed us in times of hurt. But since the trauma of colonisation and the stolen generations, we have not been able to heal in the same way. 
and we have unknowingly passed this trauma on to our children through sharing our sad stories and having them witness and experience our pain. This is known as intergenerational trauma, and we see symptoms today in broken relationships, disconnected families, violence, suicide, and drug and alcohol abuse. But this is not where our story ends. We still have strong minds and hearts, and we still know who we were and where we belong by creating safe and strong communities together, supporting our families to be free from pain, returning to our culture and building a strength of identity, we can stop the cycle of trauma and bring about positive intergenerational change so that we can continue to thrive for the next 60,000 years. There are simple things that we can all do to help heal our trauma. Visit healingfoundation.org.au to find out more. At the very heart of the gospel is reconciliation. And at the very heart of reconciliation is always repentance. Luke 24, 47, Jesus said, go into all the nations and preach forgiveness of sin, repentance and forgiveness of sin, so that they will turn to me. The heart of Jesus is for repentance. There's not one person that I'm speaking to today that is personally responsible for any of the terrible and profound injustices against Aboriginal people that were perpetrated and continue to be. But perhaps we can be the generation that God's been waiting for, that we get to be the generation that can repent on behalf of our forefathers for the sins of a nation. We're experiencing a shaking at the moment and God is speaking to nations. Our part in this is simple. We can take the moment and the time right now to search our hearts, to ask the Holy Spirit to search our hearts. I know as an Aboriginal person that I work every day with people who are still suffering from the consequences of our history. So I know that from our side, we have a deep repentance that we need to engage in for the anger and the bitterness and the unforgiveness that we as Aboriginal people can carry. And this is an opportunity for you as a non-Aboriginal person to actually allow the Holy Spirit to shine his light on some of those hidden places of our hearts where there is perhaps racism or discrimination that's hiding in a corner. Because if we can bring our hearts before the Holy Spirit, we can have clean hands and a pure heart and we can be the generation that takes our, the sins of our nation into that magnificent throne of grace where we find mercy and grace to help us in our time of need. Can we pray together? So Lord, we just pray right now in the name of Jesus that your spirit, God, would move across this family, this people, this company of people, Lord, that you've brought together for a reason, a purpose and a destiny. And we're planted in a nation, God, that has a destiny and a purpose. So Lord, I pray that as each one of us now allows your spirit to move across and shine your light into those places of our hearts, Lord, where we need to release things into your your sea of forgetfulness, Lord, where we throw them in and we ask for that forgiveness, Lord, to wash over us. Create, Lord, clean hearts and pure hands so that we can carry this nation before your throne and we can see this nation turn to Jesus. Amen. <laughs>